Well, thank you, Admiral, and thank you for making uh, all the arrangements today. And let me repeat uh, the very warm welcome that you've been offered to uh, Her Majesty's Naval Base uh, Clyde. It is a huge pleasure to have the permanent and military representatives of NATO with us for the first time, I discover, since 1990. And an even warmer welcome to the 13 countries who were not with us in 1990, uh, an indication of just how far this alliance has come. Britain's commitment to the alliance, the, the bedrock of our defense, remains absolute. And in the last year alone, we have increased our contribution. We have been policing the skies of the Black Sea. We've been leading half the maritime missions. And we have been increasing our contribution to mentoring and training in Afghanistan. This morning, our Prime Minister is in Estonia, visiting the 800 uh, British troops who, supported by our French and Danish allies, are leading NATO's enhanced forward presence and providing vital reassurance to our East European allies. But there is no greater illustration of our commitment here to NATO, which after all remains and should be a nuclear alliance than our investment in our independent nuclear deterrent submarine force. Today, we mark a particular milestone of the 350th patrol. So before I continue, I would like on your behalf to thank all our brave submariners and the submarine enterprise as a whole. For almost 50 years now, it is their efforts and those of their predecessors who have kept Britain safe every hour of every day. And this event today gives us a unique opportunity to remind ourselves of why our nuclear program remains so significant. First, as I said, it's about protecting our people. The nuclear deterrent we have here remains our only defense against the most extreme threats to our way of life. And those threats have been intensifying, whether they come from North Korea's uh, testing program, launching ballistic missiles, reinforcing her reckless defiance of the international community, or Russia, not content with aggression in the Ukraine, ramping up its nuclear rhetoric, exercising in thousands on the borders of NATO. Now, we remain here in the United Kingdom absolutely committed to the longer-term goal of a world without nuclear weapons. Two years ago, I reduced the number of deployed warheads on each of our four submarines from 48 to 40. We reduced the number of operationally available warheads. And we remain committed to reducing our overall stockpile of nuclear warheads to no more than 180 by the mid-2020s. But at the same time, we have to be realistic. When I reduced those numbers, the total number of nuclear weapons in the world did not suddenly fall. We cannot now uninvent nuclear weapons. And our deterrent ensures that our adversaries are left in no doubt that the benefits of any attack will be vastly outweighed by the consequences. And that deterrent is not just essential for our security. It is essential for NATO's security as well. It forms one of the Alliance's key centers of decision making that complicates the calculations of our adversaries. What is more, many of the nations represented here today signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty in the late 1960s in the knowledge that they were covered from then on by NATO's nuclear umbrella, including the United Kingdom nuclear deterrent. Not only did that help halt the nuclear arms race at the time, it has also helped to cut the world's nuclear stockpile. And it is no coincidence that there hasn't been a major conflict involving any of the nuclear-powered states since the end 
of the Second World War. Finally, our independent deterrent is a promise to our future. We can't know what threats lie around the corner. Yet by giving the next generation every means necessary from the conventional through to the nuclear to deal with whatever comes round the corner, we are strengthening their hand. We are ensuring that they will have the means to deter potential threats into the 2040s, the 2050s, the 2060s and beyond. And that is why we are building now four dreadnought class submarines to enter service in the early 2030s and that is why we are spending 1.3 billion sterling over the next 10 years here at this base at Faslane. And it is why too Faslane will become a royal